But I know these two women, they are going to win. I am saying it here, and uh, maybe we will come back. I know they are going to win because this is not the first time. Like the, the lady who's uh, who's uh, who's in the who's contesting for the for the Njau award, this is her third time. And she contested and won, not once. There's no time that she, every time she contests and she won. Here also, we know in Bani that they are, we are going to win there. I can fully assure you that we are going to win. Encouraging women to contest elections as candidates, Governor Tura said, it's a policy of the ruling party which recognizes women as partners in national development. Before the selection, we, I, we went around and uh, we spoke to the chiefs, we spoke to all of them to encourage women to apply. And uh, all the women that applied, that is in the uh, upper sal, we are the incumbent is a lady, and uh, here in the uh, Sami Bani Ward also, for the first time we had a lady who applied and uh, they were all selected because we know that uh, we have to give chance, to, we have to give them also chance to, 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 to show their potential. And because like, the, the women, uh, the president, they, they are behind the, uh, the president and uh, he's there for them and uh, he wants them to be part of it, to be part of uh, the, uh, the development process of the party and uh, of the country. Commissioner Ali Muman Jai is the IEC's regional head in Central River region. For him, all parties should encourage women to come forward as candidates, saying it all goes well for the Gambia's democracy and will promote women's empowerment. I have made several um, television broadcasts and all the time I'm trying to urge women. They are the majority and when it comes to local government issues, they are the people who are very much involved. Because for the men, they give out their push money and that's it. But for the women, they suffer, they have, they have to go and get water, they have to go to the market, they have to get ways, ways, means, ways, ways and means of how to organize their, their, their themselves. The Independent Electoral Commission, Jai yeah, said, is also exploring other means to compel political parties to put forward women candidates in the future. I understand here also that there were some women who were sub, uh, suggested, but they withdrew at the last instance. And I think, um, hopefully, we'll do we'll, we'll what Senegal did to make it a law that every political party or every constituency must have a certain number of women involved. Uh, that's the only way I think we can get them around. That said, campaign is well underway now throughout the country, and two heavyweights are all that stand between these women and the two seats at the Kuntaur Area Council. Baukar Sise of the Opposition National Reconciliation Party is the man hoping to unseat Chane. Baukar had been working in the hotel industry before coming home to answer to his people's call. I have full confidence that I will win. Mm. Yeah. Why are you so confident? Because I'm a different man and why I want to make a change. And people are after that. So that is why I think that I'll win. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Usman Koma, an independent candidate who had contested on a UDP ticket in the last elections, is giving him a try once again to wrest control of the seat from the APRC. Really, I'm very, very, very optimistic that I will win okay. in, on the 4th of April 2013. Uh, if you know, uh, I don't know whether you are aware, your opponent, Minata, is, uh, yesterday I was talking to her and she, she seems very, very confident. Uh, she's saying that an, an independent candidate is just a waste of time. Yeah, okay. That's what she said. Mm. But just we, we wait for on the 5th, mm. inshallah, everything will be clear. The battle lines have now been drawn in the central river region. In which 14 wards will be contested, while the remaining 8 wards have been claimed by the APRC on the post. With the elections slated for the 4th of April, many people will be watching with keen interest whether the two armies will win or not. But whatever the outcome, they would have made history in their own right. Mori Jalo, GRTS. Recent developments in Africa prompted us to follow this developing story with a view to bring it on the spotlight and constructively analyze its implications for the political future of the continent. Accused by the International Criminal Court ICC of committing crimes against humanity in relation to the violent aftermath of the 2007 election, Uhuru Kenyatta was named as a suspect by the ICC prosecutor Luis Moreno Campo on the 15th of December 2010 with allegations of planning and funding violence in Naivasha and Nakuru. According to the ICC charges, Kenyatta's accusations include murder, 
persecution and deportation or forcible transfer of a population. Uhuru has been accused of committing these crimes as an indirect co-perpetrator. My names are Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. I was born on the 26th of October 1961 in Nairobi, Kenya. Currently, courtesy of the people of Gatundu South, their member of parliament, and courtesy of the duly elected president of Kenya, I am a deputy prime minister and minister for finance. Still with the ongoing cases at the Hague-based court, on January 2012, calls of resignation forced Uhuru to step down as finance minister, a position that he officially handed over to Njeru Hidai in an acting capacity. As I go, there are a number of issues that will continue to require your attention and immediate attention. However, he still retained his job as Deputy Prime Minister, a position that can only be challenged through a censure motion in Parliament. Can the ICC case against him impede his presidential dream? The one thing that Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, uh, the one thing that united them and made them form a ticket uh, in 2012, was, I mean 2013, was that ICC process. And I think what they are trying to do is to galvanize their support and say, if they are going to win this election in 2013, then they are sending a message to the international community, they are sending a message to the ICC. They are saying that these two communities that are alleged to have um, clashed in 2007 are the same communities that are now working together towards electing the same set of leaders. So their message is very simple to the ICC. They are transforming this election into a referendum of sorts on the ICC and saying, hey, if Kenyans are willing to elect these leaders into office, then who is the international community to say we cannot work with these leaders? And that, I think, is the main reason why we have the Jubilee Alliance, to actually have a referendum on the ICC process and tell the international community that if Kenyans who suffered in 2007 are willing to elect the same set of leaders into office, then nobody can say that, uh, I mean, they should not be in office. But the ICC is definitely an election uh, issue. We cannot pretend that uh, it is not. That uh, William Ruto, who is uh, Uhuru's running mate, and Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta himself, are joined at the hip by the sword of uh, Damocles that is called the impending ICC uh, trials that uh, they find that their fate is uh, beholden to each other and they have come together. At the start of last year, they went across the country from one corner to the other, from one nook to one cranny, talking about the ICC in what were called uh, prayer meetings but which were essentially campaign for election forums with the ICC as the agenda and trying to encourage the local, shall we say, tribal communities from which they hail to look at uh, the impending election as an ICC affair and uh, to vote in this election as a, a referendum on the ICC. It remains so. It cannot be wished away. Kenyatta made a previous attempt at the presidency in 2002, but was overwhelmingly defeated by opposition candidate at the time, Mwai Kibaki. <laughs> Fast forward 10 years later, and Uhuru believes his long wait could soon pay off. So how different is the Uhuru Kenyatta of 2002 and that of 2013? There's a whole lot of difference. Number one, 
Uhuru Kenyatta has matured as a politician. He has been now in, 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 in politics for more than 10 years as a very strong personality. And he also has managed to work out his own uh, uh, base in terms of the constituency uh, in, in central Kenya. I, I think you need to remember that Uhuru Kenyatta came to parliament in 1990. I mean, he came through a nomination. Mark To was forced to step down so that Uhuru Kenyatta would be nominated as, as um, a member of parliament. Unlike in 2002, where 